Good morning. So I was thinking we should just move to church somewhere warm. We'll go with all 10 of you people. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. Let me just get set up. Hey, turn your neighbor and say you're looking good today. <laughs> thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just going to move this up a bit so I don't walk into the stairs and stumble and fall. So, everyone warm? Everyone good? Good. Awesome. Uh, who's been liking what Pastor's been talking about? Anybody remember what he's talking about? <laughs> Except for Pastor, anybody remember what he's talking about? <laughs> no? Maybe? Four-letter word? No? Love. Let's talk about love. If you guys listened. <laughs> this is probably to go along with it, to show how much God actually loves us, how much his love is, and how much we are his children. We are his little, little, little children that he is there for us no matter what. He's there to give us whatever we need, always there despite how you are. I call my, uh, my uh, sermon this morning is called Secureness. Can you say that? Secureness. I actually didn't think it was a word until I went on the, on the Google and uh, looked it up. The definition is a state of freedom from fear or danger. It's a pretty good definition for secureness. Let me just pray. God, I thank you so much for how much you love us. I thank you so much for being here this morning. God, Father, for your anointing this morning during worship. Father, I thank you so much for all these people here, Lord. Father, I pray, God, that you would be with them. Father, I pray that this word would, Father, help them with their walk with you, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to go to Hebrews 6, 13 to 18. I'm going to read this from the, the Message Bible. Makes it a little easier to understand. Uh, verse 13, when God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it to the hilt putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. Abraham stuck it out and got everything that had been promised to him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there is any question that they'll make good on the promise. How many ever said, I swear to God, I'll do this? Every time, right? And the authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word. A rock solid guarantee. A rock solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, reaching past all appearances, right to the very presence of God, where Jesus, running ahead of us, has taken up his permanent post as a high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, somewhere there. Uh, I love this scripture. Because God can't sin. God can't lie. And the word of God is truth no matter what. Despite how this world is running right now, despite everything like that, God's word is always true. When I was growing up, I was, um, when we came to Brantford, actually, and uh, I was living in Scarborough and stuff like that. And when I grew, when I was growing up in Brantford, I, I was uh, insecure a lot. I was, you know, not the kid who was popular, not the kid who hung out with you know, the cool kids or anything like that. And, you know, I was that kid that 
you know, you try to wear the right clothes. You try to listen to the right things. You know, try to fit in, right? You're, we always try to fit in. And I think as adults, we still have difficulties with that. You know, we have certain moments where we feel insecure. We're not secure, right? We feel like, oh, man. You know, and especially when it comes to talking about Jesus and God and Christ and all that stuff. This world has blasphemed us. This world has made us to nothing. This world has gone completely the other way than what we believe in and stuff like that. And you never, and we hear about it all the time. People getting killed for Christ. People getting killed for all these things. People getting made fun of and all these types of things. And you hear about anything that you post on Facebook, you're going to always have someone that's going to disagree with you or anything like that. I remember growing up and, you know, my mom and dad split up. That's why we came to Brantford and stuff like that. And, you know, growing up in Brantford, my biggest moment was, you know, wearing the right clothes. I had a thing about clothes. Sometimes I still do. Sometimes I don't right now because I work at home and it makes me a little more lazy. And, but, you know, I always wanted to wear the name brand stuff, right? Everybody wanted to wear the Nike swoosh or Adidas. Come on, you guys wanted to? No? No? I'm speaking to the, oh my, sorry. I'm speaking to my generation. <laughs> For you older folk, no, I'm just kidding. For you cooler folk, <laughs> you guys wanted the disco stuff, right? I don't know. <laughs> but I remember this one summer, we went to Florida, and, you know, my parents, we we went to, like, the shopping center and stuff like that, and I was able to pick, like, a cool piece of article of clothing. So I picked, like, these red Adidas shorts that were awesome. I wish I still had them. <laughs> they probably won't fit me now, but whatever. I can hand them down to my kids. But And then, like, I had, like, a Adidas shirt that I was able to get. And I was, like, so pumped for the first day of school because I had some cool clothing on. I was, like, I, I had it all laid out the night before. Come on. We, but we've all been there. We've all been there. I had it all laid out the night before and stuff like that. And I remember... Like, putting it on, going to school, and I just remember, like, kids looking at me, like, weird. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> but kids looking at me weird, and instantly, it was like, I felt insecure, right? I'm like, but I'm wearing the cool stuff. Like, come on, I'm part of the, part of the clan now. That obviously didn't happen. I'm glad it didn't happen, but, you know... That moment when, you know, one of the kids made fun of me, it was a moment of complete, utter disbelief and utter going down. And, you know, from, you know, growing up through high school and stuff like that, you find your friends and all that type of stuff, and you, you find a good group of friends that you can hang out with. And, you know, you still have those insecurities within you because there's always the cool kids at school, right? Everyone's been through school, and I know kids, our kids are going through it and stuff like that. School's a tough place. School's a tough place to be yourself, really. School's really tough. And I'm so glad that we were able to have these kids here in our church, especially the, last, the two weeks ago when we had the youth service and Matthew and Gavin preaching and stuff like that. It's just awesome that, you know, they stand on the word of God to be able to do that. Let's just give them a hand. Where are they? They're over there. It's hard to do that when you're a teenager in this day and age. Amen? Um, where was I going along with that? I forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot where I was going along with that. Cool clothes, yes. I had cool clothes and stuff like that. But growing up, you know, my mom and dad split up and stuff like that. And I had, I had like, anger towards my dad. I had complete, utter anger towards my dad. Leaving us, you know, doing the stuff that my mom and dad, like, them fighting and stuff like that. And I remember coming to church. I've been here for, I don't know, however. I'm in second in line to Earl, Pastor Earl, actually. <laughs> He's been here forever after Pastor. But uh, but I just remember coming to church and feeling like I'm a part of something. You know, feeling like where I was included. I loved coming to youth. I loved coming to youth. I loved Friday nights. I looked forward to Friday nights. Coming out here, 
being with people that I can have fun with, talk with, laugh with, worship with, and all that type of stuff. I love Sunday mornings now. My Sunday mornings, I come, I feel encouraged. I feel, you know, you can talk to people and stuff like that. It might be because I work from home by myself, but it's, 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 it's coming here, worshiping God with all you people. <laughs> all you people. But, you know, and I remember the moment where you know, just worshiping God and praying to God and being like, God, you got to fix this. And I just remember this peace within myself. And, you know, I forgot what it was or whatever. I just remember going home that night, sleeping in my bed, and just crying out to God. Just saying, hey, God, I forgive my dad, you know, all this type of stuff. And, you know, I know that you love me. I know that you're there for me. I remember going along, like, going along my walk with Christ, I, I didn't know if I was saved or not. How many of you ever felt like that, if you don't know you're saved or not? You feel like, you know, every time you mess up, you feel like, oh, I gotta say the salvation prayer again. I think I said the salvation prayer like 50 times. <laughs> and only some of you might have already, but <laughs> but you know, that moment on, I remember forgiving my dad and walking with God and it's not an instant, like, quick turnaround where you feel secure with God. You know, it's a walk with him, your relationship with him, and totally being there with him, right? In moments that we are going to freak out. Like, I remember, like, last time I talked about my water explosion. And, you know, in moments where we have no control over our lives, those are the best moments where we can just say, Oh, God, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I need your help. And when it becomes, when you become secure in your life, I still have insecurities, don't get me wrong, I still have insecurities in some, some of my things in my life and stuff like that. But when you start becoming secure with God, you start believing in yourself. You start believing in the things that God has given you, his promises. There's many, 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 many promises in God's word. And you start knowing those things. And when you become, become secure with God, it's not about what you do. It's not about how much you perform, how much you come out to church. It's not about giving your money. It's not about giving your time. It's not any of that. It's about who you are, your soul in Christ Jesus in God. That is the only thing. I hate it when I hear people say, well, if you're not coming to church, then, you know, you're not, you're not Christian. I hate it when people say, well, if you're not giving 10%, then who are you? I hate it when people say those. I hate it when, you know, you read these things on Facebook. You're like, you're shaking your head. That is not what Christ died for us. That is not why he went on the cross for us. That is not why he did that. That is not why you need to say the salvation prayer 50 times. You say it once, and God loves you. God loves you. And, you know, we're going to have moments where we're going to feel like the world is ending. And I think I said last week I've been watching this series on Netflix called Dirty Money. And, you know, I knew this stuff was going on. If you're a friend of Brandon's, you're going to know this stuff is going on. <laughs> he believes in all these theories and stuff like that, and most of them are true. But, <laughs> but, was, but you know, it was an eye-opener to me in terms of how this world runs and how greedy this world is in terms of money, and it's not about people at all. Their motto is screw the people. Let's just make money. We can see it. We can see it every single day. We can see it even on Facebook or, you know, or social media or anything like that. We see it. Who cares about you? I don't care. I'll write whatever I want to write. You know, and this world needs people who are encouraging. This world needs people who will look past any circumstances and say, hey, I love you and I'll go with you despite how you are. Being secure forces you to be willing to do what God wants you to do. 
If you're not secure, you're just going to sit back on the sidelines and praise and worship him, pray and do all these things, but you're actually not doing what God wants you to do. Being secure is the willingness to go out and step on God's word and being like, I am a child of God. I am his son. I am his daughter. I know that you, that you created me and that I can do this just because I know you said I can do it. That's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to in your lives. I want to see this church be a willing church, be a church who stands on the word of God and says, despite our circumstances, I don't care. I am going to do it for him. I'm going to do it for him. We always say, plummet hell to bring people to heaven. We always say, you know, we want people in this church. We always say we want to be there for people. We can say that every single day. I can say that every single day. But if we are not doing something, if we are not willing to step up and take the step of faith, take the step of being with God, take the step where we know that he is there behind us saying, go, go. Take the step where we just say, Jesus died on the cross for me and do the things that he wants us to do, we are not doing what God wants us to do. It might be hard to take that. It might be hard, you know, we live our lives, right? We go every day, we do our thing, our thing, our thing, our thing, our thing. We try to work and we get our kids and stuff like that. But if at the end of the day, you don't feel like you've done something for Christ, you gotta check yourself. You really gotta check yourself. What was the Great Commission? The Great Commission is to go out and make disciples. It doesn't say go out and make money. It doesn't say go out and do all these other things. It says go out and do, make disciples. One of the guys from, um, I'm so glad the Eagles won last week. <laughs> One of the guys from the Eagles, I forgot what his name was, but they had an interview with him. And, you know, this is a football player, a professional football player, making oodles amount of money and stuff like that. And they asked him, like, what are you here for? Where do you want to go after this and stuff like that? He's like, I really don't care as long as at the end of the day I'm making disciples for Christ. And I was like, what? <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> go Eagles. <laughs> he made me a believer, amen? But, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but, you know, that should be our lives at the end of the at the, at the end of the day, right? Our our mindset. Jeremiah uh, twenty nine eleven says, "For I know the plans I have for you," declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We have everything that we need. I, I may say that every single time I'm up here or anything like that. We have everything we need, everything that we need. We've already won the lotto. We have all those things. We have, despite any of those circumstances, despite your sicknesses, it's like diseases, or despite what you're struggling with in your life, we have the power to overcome those things. And it's not going to be a quick next day type of thing. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fight because the devil's not going to put up with a, with a quick thing like this. He's going to eat at you. He's going to come at you. And we, as Christians, we have to have the boldness and the secureness in God and, his, and the relationship we have with him to say, hey, today is not the day, devil. Today is not the day. Today is the day that I will overcome this, and I'm going to walk from it. And each and every day that comes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep my mind on things that are above. I'm going to keep my mind on things that are worthy, are praiseworthy of you. I'm going to keep my mind on things that you've already blessed me with. Thank you for my house. Thank you for my family. Thank you for a job. Thank you that I can come to church without being ridiculed. In Canada, thank you that we still have that freedom. Let them try to take it away. We have a God that can take care of us. We have a God that sets the world. He's holding the, the world in his hands. 
did you guys watch the SpaceX Falcon launch this week? Well, I was watching it live, and uh, the Tesla, Tesla guy, Elon, he put a Tesla car, and there's Starman sitting in the car looking out. So I thought it was all, I thought it was pretty funny. When you have that much money, why not, right? <laughs> but, you know, when the rocket launched and they were showing it live streaming and stuff like that, and, you know, when they showed the guy in the car, like, just it's just space and him in the car. Because they just have a, look, a little camera. You can't even see the, the rockets behind him and stuff like that. I could just see God. Look at that. They sent the car in space. Like, that's all, that's all that went through my head. And I just, I'm just like, but that's how God, that's how big God is, right? That's how big God is. And when we think like that, where we think he is huge in this massive creation, we know that we have the power to overcome. Amen? I was reading a book. Uh, this is one of, uh, one of the things from the book. It says, this is true security. I will give away my best ideas because I know where to find more. I will encourage everybody I see because I myself am encouraged. I will highlight and celebrate others because I know eternally where my worth and my esteem come from. We have to know where we come from. And how we know where we come from is spending time with the Lord, spending time with God. I want to encourage you each and every single day that when you have an insecurity that comes up, you don't have to take them all at once and throw them out, but you can do one thing at a time, right? We all have, we all have time where we can do one thing at a time. And when we take that insecurity and we just, whatever it may be in your lives, just say, devil not today, God's got me. Just say it, devil not today, God's got me. God's got me. I want you to say that every single time you feel insecurity. Because I know God's going to hear that voice, whatever it may be. You may be screaming, you may be yelling, it could be just a soft whisper in your heart. Whatever it may be, God's going to hear you. And based on his promises and based on what the Bible says, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And, you know, the year 2018 is going to be the year that you are going to be secure in God. The year 2018 is moments you are going to know that God was behind you. And God's going to totally bless you. But you have to believe it. You have to have that relationship. There, it's, not, it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. And when you spend time with God, and when you spend, you, you know, Whatever it is you may be, worshiping God and praying, wherever it may be, shower, whatever, on the John. I pray on the John. One of the best prayer moments, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> wherever it may be, I'm just, saying, I'm just trying to tell you that because it could be wherever you may be, in the car, whatever it may be. Just if you keep your mindset on things that are of God instead of what, the world tells you instead of what other people have told you, your mindset starts changing. Your mindset starts changing. And when when that happened with my dad and forgiving him, it was because I changed my mindset. Instead of thinking about him, instead of thinking about what he did to our family, instead of thinking all those things that he could have done, I started thinking of what is above and what our eternal father is. And that's when I started forgiving my natural dad, my dad here on earth. And that's when I started, you know, that's when I started loving my dad for just who he is. We're, we're all humans. We're going to make mistakes. You know, we're, we're natured like that. But when we start thinking of things that are above, we start thinking of people differently. And that's when we start loving people. Just, just like what pastor's been saying. I know I probably heard it, but no one else did. <laughs> But we start knowing about God's love. So I want to encourage you, whatever the insecurity may be, just, you know, that moment, just say, God, devil, you don't have me today. God's got me. I want you to be encouraged that this year, 
you start making leaps and bounds instead of, you know, it's just another year. I felt like the January was just another January. I didn't feel like it was changed at all, but, you know, I hate winter. <laughs> but, you know, things in our lives, we, we need to change our thinking, our mindsets, our our way that we live, live life and stuff like that, and get good friends, friends that will encourage you, and friends that will tell you when you're being stupid. Those are good friends to have, right? Amen? Friends that will, sharp, was it iron sharpening iron, as it says in God's word? Just just step up. Step up to the plate. Do it. Just do it. Because I want to hear stories in this place. I want to hear stories in this church. You know, we want to hear stories of our families and friends getting saved. At the end of the day, that's what we're here for, right? Amen? Let me just pray. Is it okay if I pray? Pastor, did you want to say anything? God, I thank you so much for your love. Father, your Father, your gold for us, God. God, how much you love us despite our circumstances, despite our sicknesses, despite when we say we don't wanna we don't want to talk to you, despite when we say we just don't want to be with you today. God, I thank you that you love us despite when we hurt you and we fall away from you, God. God, I pray, God, that, Father, people would be encouraged, Father, encouraged to spend time with you, God, Father, to talk to you, Father, to love you, Father, that we may just be a, a little bit of hope and faith in you, God, to do the things that you want us to do. Lord, I pray, God, that you protect everyone here, Father. You protect their hearts, Father. I pray, God, that we are a bunch of people who are secure in you, God. Father, that we know, we know, we know that you love us. Lord, and I, I pray, God, for 2018, Father, for this church, Father, for the people of this church, Lord, that we see people come in, Father, because we were secure in showing them the word of God, showing them what your love is, God. Lord, I pray, God, that this week, Father, that you give us moments, Lord, Father, that we, where we can step up, Father, be willing to do what you want us to do, Lord. Father, give us those moments and let us be bold, Lord, Father, in you. God, I pray, God, Father, for the rest of this, this day, Lord, and I pray that you be with them. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Tony.